All right, good afternoon everybody. This is Jeff Scott. Actually, this is take two as my computer decides to go into a Windows update right while I was doing this. I have about 40 minutes max today, so I'm going to do an abridged version of my top-down review. Some exciting things, I think, to look at today. Uh, welcome to the HGSI Review. Today, I, I title it Market Technicals and Fundamentals versus QE to Infinity and Beyond. Um, as this is a market that should be rolling over and be tired and selling in May, but it keeps going higher and higher, and we all know it's being manipulated by federal governments worldwide with quantitative easing and low interest rates. Um, there's my email address for any comments. Um, if you see indicators within HGSI um, that you don't have, you're probably going to be getting them in a, in a um, upcoming update. I've had some indicators that are not in HGSI and some that are programmed within the trade station and will make available probably for a light purchase since I've had to pay a developer to develop them in a very short future. If you're interested in them, please um, contact me as well. This session is for educational purposes only. Anything recommended in the spirit of education, not investment advice. I'm a doctor, not a broker, and I'm not affiliated with any software vendors or trading companies. Anything I demonstrate are tools that I use in my daily trading. I pay for all the tools I demonstrate, and um, I try and show you what I do by myself. If I um, had to pick what to use, I don't need all the icons on my desk. I need a real-time trading platform. I need a post-market analysis software, which I think HGSI by far is the best. I like EdgeRater for backtesting, seasonal analysis. I use Magenta, and I'm a big fan of Ian Woodward and Ron Brown. Be your own guru is what I learned from Ian Woodward. I'd say the same thing to you. And you could see on this um, list a number of folks, Ian and Ron for Woodward and Brown Investing, Alexander Elder up here, or Alison Catcher, O'Neill, some of the gurus that I've learned from, both from attending live sessions as well as reading their books and visiting their websites. Um, I often make the mistake of saying I would buy this. I have no idea what I'm going to buy tomorrow. I'm looking for setups. I'm looking for stocks that have some chart pattern or other that I'm interested in, and then I'll look for triggers in the market on Monday. I also want to see what way the market is going and what the sector is doing. As always, I'll make comments on the market as a whole using TradeStation and EdgeRater and then jump right into HGSI for the rest of the, the, the presentation. Stock patterns are cyclical. Um, I still think we're up here and that every time I think we're going to roll over on the right shoulder, we hook up again on another leg. And if you look at all the indices, you have a series of 3% and 1% mini corrections, and we're missing the 8%, which we last saw ending in November. Don't fight the trend in an uptrend. Buy pullbacks. Don't buy, but sell, rather, retracements on a downtrend. And if we go sideways, you sell the peaks, buy the, the troughs, and you look for breakouts and breakdowns. Here's Ian Aran, the secret reference of HGSI. Um, Special, special notice, there's a new, um, as you see here, a new website has popped up for HGSI. I'll let you go and spend time there. Um, you can see Gil Morales making some comments on it. Um, basically, free 30-day trial remains. Um, there's a new thing called the Insider Club with Ian and Ron. If you look under investment strategies, you can find my name and you can see some of the prior videos that I've done. And um, if you don't understand the things that I do, um, go back and review some of the others where you'll um, get better training because I'm not going to spend much time training. I'm going to spend more time um, looking. Um, if you can see here, a new release of HGSI is coming. We'll go to the Learning Center. I'll let you see that. There's a new version coming May 25th. I already have it as a beta tester. And the big difference here on the new version is um, I want to go to the blog is that it's faster, um, much faster, by about three times, and um, also includes a number of new indicators, including green candle lows and red candle highs. Enough of HGSI, again, free 30-day trials. This is my favorite program. I can't say enough about it. Let's take a real quick look into the market and get a sense of where we might be going this coming week. So I'm going to start with uh, TradeStation. I'll look at three indices, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. And they're all going to be exactly the same. What do I see? I see green bars. Elder Impulse tells me that green I can buy or hold, red I can sell or hold, blue I can go anywhere I want. 
and um, I can't sell in green, I can't buy in red. That's still in a buy or hold, buy or hold, obviously extended, um, running up the top of the elder um, band, but continues to run up the top, and um, you know it'll run until it stops. What is nice to see is the MACD lines, um, and perhaps here even the histogram are making new highs along with the indicator. So S&P 500, toppy, yes, long run, yes, rolled over, not yet. Dow will look very similar. I've got so many things running, so it takes a little bit of time. And you can see green, green, and green. Next, the histograms taken out the prior high, I mean the lines rather, as has the histogram, so no divergences here pushing further higher, and if we look at the NASDAQ, you'll see more of the same, which is a lot of green on the impulse, a pushing higher on the, the lines, and at least the lines making new highs with the market. So, you know, it's hard for me to be very disturbed um, with what I see here uh, and be very worried. So it looks actually looks pretty good. Um, one thing I, I like to look at is on, I look at a lot of different things, I and mean, you know, I'm a little bit nutso, but if I look at, so the futures right now shouldn't be doing much yet, um, yeah, they haven't opened yet, so they're, they're, they're a big zero. Back on Friday, more evidence of a bullish stage, you see a lot more green on the 3X bulls than the 3X bears, and you also can see um, pocket pivots on emerging markets, on energy, gasoline, and semiconductor longs. So perhaps more you know places to look at where you might want to go travel. Uh, one of the things I mentioned my trade station indicators, but I can scan for Bible, Bible gap ups real time, as you could see here. Um, we may mention some of these um, as we go forward, but these, if they hit green, it means it's made my requirements for the gap percentage as well as the volume percent. If they're yellow, then they did not make the volume, so those don't get, they don't count. And when I see a red one, it means that they may have made the volume, but they're below the 50-day moving average, and therefore I don't count them. So I scan intraday looking for things, and as I said, I'm going to make this indicator package available for anybody that wants it, but we're probably a couple weeks out before that happens. I have to customize them based upon customer number. I'm not ready for that yet. Um, I like to look at EdgeRater. For those who don't know EdgeRater, um, it automates some things that used to be a pain in the ass. Excuse my French. I shouldn't say that word broadcasting, but boy, was it a pain. I'm a big fan of Bollinger. To me, Bollinger is a cup. At the top of the cup is 100%, at the bottom is zero. If something gets above the cup or below the cup, since it lives inside the cup 95% of the time, it's going to have a tendency of moving into the cup. So a market that's way oversold will have a lot of stocks below, and an overbought will have a lot of stocks above. Bull market lives in the top half, bear market lives in the bottom. So it turns out EdgeRater can take those 10 slices from 0 to 10 or 0 to, 10 to, 0 to 100, one below and one above, so 12 slices, and tell me where the stocks are. So I just ran EdgeRater a moment ago. And what EdgeRater told me was that 90% of the stocks are trading above the midline. Now that's extremely bullish in itself. It's a high number, but not the highest I've seen. And 14% of stocks are trading above the upper bull in Japan. Again, high, but not the highest. Perhaps a little bit more worrisome is 25, 24, 22, and 14 are 60 percent of stocks are from 0.8 to 0.9, 0.9 to 1 or above 1. So stocks are near the top, but I've seen this over 1 get a lot higher before the market has to snap back. But I think reasons to be nervous. But what we might just see, and I think we did see this week, is group rotation more so than a rolling over of the market. Enough of that. Let's take a look at what HGSI tells me about the market. So I like to go into Major Markets Plus top-down analysis. 
and see where the strength is. And first thing you notice is it pretty much doesn't matter what market you have, but the markets are at the top, while at the bottom are silver, gold, volatility, and a few other things. If you look at five-day performance, the Dow Transport's lead, small caps, and 1,500, 1,500, um, everything is up there in the market trailing over five-day silver, gold, bonds, and volatility. One-day performance um, looks a lot like five-day performance, so I won't say much about it. i like to comment on a couple, so let's look at the NASDAQ. Let's start with the NYSE. In fact, you really don't need to look at any other markets. They all look the same. And what do the markets tell me? For those who haven't seen this before, momentum indicators up here, green is good. When the short one goes red and the long one is green, those are pullbacks. Next bar up here is the high jump. When it gets the highest high, it's usually a place where the market likes to go sideways or pull back. Green candle lows and red candle highs. Viable gap ups from Morales and Catcher will be plotted in the middle. And then this is the DMI, DI up and down with crossovers. On my chart, candlesticks with an eight day exponential <coughs> and then a 17 of 50 in blue and a 200 in red moving average. I've got some lines in here, ignore those. Blues are pocket pivots up, reds, pinks are pocket pivots down. Two volume bars, nothing fancy there except the top one has Eurekas and green and Phoenixes and red. They give me exuberance in the markets or the HGSI follow through days. And then kahunas on the bottom, blue is good, red is bad if you're long. So what do I see? I see a market that ran up, went sideways, and is running again. And if I look at the NYSE, if I look at the NASDAQ, you can see NASDAQ really running high, hard now, changed its trajectory, running faster. Um, I look at the S&P 1500, perhaps, that looks at all these to give me the best picture of what's going on. And then I think we're done with the uh, indices, because if you don't believe there's strength there, um, there's strength. Now, if we are starting to do this, so we ran up on this trend line. Now we're running ran up on that trend line. And now we're running on this trend line. We're probably getting to a point where we're going to go into a climax run, and we may be in a climax run. Climax runs end badly, but who knows when this climax run is going to stop. And you don't want to be the first one. You don't want to be you want, don't want to be the last one on or the last one off. So you probably want to watch it closely and see from there. I'm going to shut down Trade Station right now because it's using up a lot of my uh, memory power, and I think things, as I said, this is take two. Um, the prior time I did it, the computer basically froze and went into an update. So, all right, enough of that. Let's look at what's weak. Silver and gold look horrible, and um, I'll show you how bad on gold. Silver, dramatic pullback from, you know, when the market's from September high, really nonstop down, only a small bounce here to new lows or recent lows. Um, we take a look at gold. And what I did, I'm going to erase this and, and do it for you again, show how bad gold has fallen. So from a high to the low, In 129 days, so about six months, gold fell 25%. It had a tepid bounce, 17 periods of 9%, and now it's sold back off 8% in the last two weeks. Gold and silver are destroyed, and um, I think people are chasing faster moving assets and getting out of gold and silver. Now, at some point, you're going to get down to support, and you're going to see a big bounce. Speaking of bounce, volatility continues to sell off. It has really struggled to hold above the 200, tell you how much of a downtrend it's in, but it's not as low as it gets. So volatility, not an issue right now. All right, so next thing I'd like to do is look at sector as industries. And you can see there's 146. The top down's a balanced couple of weeks ranking. Let's look at something that's short-term which is the two-day force, which we have right here. And we'll, 
I want to make a few comments because I don't think I have time to go in as much as I'd like to. Um, oil and gas are making a comeback, whether it's exploration with companies like Cabot Oil and Gas, COG, and Noble NBL, whether it's services, whether it's refiners, or it's drillers, oil is back hard and clearly rotation into oil energy has occurred. Home building remains relatively strong, as do banks, diversified banks, and the large banks. Um, auto manufacturers have been led up by Tesla. Ford looks strong. But you want to drop down to this guy and look at auto parts and equipment. You want to see some earnings growth, take a look at American Axle, TRW, and some others. So there's a lot of strength in this market. What you won't see is Celgene and um, Biogen IDEC. Those are an Amgen, three stocks that sold off pretty hard this week. So very quickly, top-down investing, highlight, change index group. JP Morgan, we'll take a look at that in a second. Looks like I get to that one. All City, JP Morgan, and Bank of America all look the same. They've been in nice runs up. They all had a shallow but long two-month base. They're running again. Everything is green. JP Morgan um, doesn't have a lot of earnings growth coming into the stock short term. It pays a 2.3% dividend. They've got some craziness about whether what to do with Jamie Dimon, who is really, I think he's a great CEO, about whether splitting the CEO and the chairman spot. So there might be side distractions. But notice everything has just turned green, breaking out. I think this runs. Um, Bank of America is the one that I'm currently holding. It's the same pattern, similar pattern, and it's running again as well. Uh, the one that I might be intrigued about is ING. It's an ADR, so it's very gappy. Obviously trailing the others, had a kahuna, and what I thought was a viable gap up on Friday, and which showed up as a viable gap up on TradeStation, though it's not painting in HGSI. Um, the earnings on ING are not as bad as it looks right there. And people know I like to use MarketSmith to um, follow up on my earnings. So let me just go into MarketSmith real quick. And I'm not going to have as much chance since i got to cut off now in 28 minutes to go as deep into MarketSmith on every stock for earnings. But I will look at them at a couple that, um, since I've done this before today, I know it was a meaningful um, finding. So we're looking here at ING. And when I see ING, I see a turnaround play and earnings growth coming in. It trades at a multiple of seven. It's growing nearly three to ten, six times that. With you know, if it maintains seven on a dollar sixty-nine, it's a dollar seventy. Make it easy. I mean, you got about twelve-dollar stock. It's trading at about nine dollars. I think there's a big opportunity, and I might expect some market expansion there. I thought that ING was interesting. If I go back, next group down is semiconductors. And this is to me, well, Micron is the leader, and I'm more interested, frankly, in Intel, which I currently own. Micron has been in a nice up move. It has stubbed itself a little bit, pulled back to the 50, which gave a nice time to buy, followed by Kahuna's, DMI crossover, and run to the races. Several pocket pivots, everything is green, great earnings per share growth, do your own research. Um, up at the high end, a high jump, so in a place I expect a correction. The leader to me is this guy here, which is Intel which um, today Samsung announced that Intel Atoms will be in its next generation of the, the, the Samsung Galaxy, which is a big deal because Intel has been punished for lack of a clear-cut mobile um, winning strategy. You might want to look there. Not going to spend too much time here. Solar stocks behaving well. Um, you can go visit this at your own leisure. Automobile manufacturers, as I mentioned, Tesla is a big winner here. Hard for me to want to jump into Tesla right now after the run it had this past week. I want to see it calm down and pull back. It continued to run despite a um, secondary offer, especially when the CEO came out and said he's going to buy $100 million worth of those shares. Um, big move up in Tesla on earnings, finally becoming profitable. As I mentioned, Ford is another one that's done very well. And like the banks, sort of went sideways for a long time, several pocket pivots, moving up on increased volume, everything is green. Not any earnings per share growth, um, but 2.7% earnings yield and probably would be the domestic big car leader um, of the bunch. 
I'm going to jump down for a second and show you a couple of the auto parts names that I thought looked good. Again, right-click change to index group, and I'm just going to spend a second, and the ones that I own are, I bought American Axle, but several of them look good. American Axle is breaking out. Um, now, has it run a lot? Yes. Does it need to pause to refresh? Maybe. Why do I say maybe? Because you see that number there? That should alert you that something is happening here. You might not want to believe it. So let's go pull up MarketSmith AXL. Let's see what it tells me. It tells me it's going to have 260 in 2014. Multiply it by 19, make that 20. That's a $52, $53 stock. I'll take 25 bucks. That's a 50% move from here. I think it's got the earnings power to get you there. TRW we'll go look at in a second is another one which stubbed its toes in 12 and is starting to grow again. 10 times 736 would be a $73 stock, and that would be assuming no, no increase in multiple. I think these stocks look interesting and might be another way. Let's take a look at TRW, and you can look at the rest of the list at your own breaking out with several pocket pivots, um, not as extended as Axel, but not the same earnings power. Let's go back. Let's take a look at that energy complex. Oil gas exploration. I'm going to call Noble Energy the poster child and Cabot Oil and Gas my second favorite. This was a pick of Lou several weeks ago on my live session. And you could see breaking out to new highs, Noble Energy. On Friday, everything has turned green. Look at this earnings per share growth. And um, you know, do your own research, but there's a lot of earnings power coming into this group. And you can see right here with Noble Energy um, a, a, a gone from stubbing its toes to growing 25 times, which is its multiple. 25 times times 8 is $200. It's a $120 stock. 50% run, I think, is possible in this one. The other one I liked was Cabot Oil and Gas. And look at the earnings per share growth here. It trades at a much bigger multiple. Um, but even if it dropped in half to 40, if it hits this 261, that's $104 stock. It's at $30 now. That's a 50% drive. So I think that Noble Energy is compelling. As I mentioned, I also like Cabot Oil and Gas. These are expensive. And you can see Cabot Oil and Gas. I know this one's gone sideways. The steam on its high jump is done. It's now got some freedom to roam. Pocket Pivot, Big Kahuna. I like this one a lot. Great earnings per share growth coming into Cabot Oil and Gas. Also in this patch, you have equipment and services. Um, Halliburton is another one that I have owned. Now to be totally clear, I have lost my shirt on this stock but decided to double down and hold on after it pulled back. And because of that, I've done well. But I'm not advocating you buy things. More th things have gotten hurt. You can see this used to be a $55 stock. I think September 11 might have been when the Horizon disaster occurred in the Gulf. Maybe it was before then, but that led to some of the sell-off. And um, in Halliburton, you know, that's being settled now. Um, and now the fundamentals may be turning around. Based upon the weekly, it's not too late to think about this. Everything is green. And if I look at earnings power as a driver of my mind, and I look at Halliburton, what do I see? 26 times $4. Even if I get 4 times 16, it's a $64 play. I think you might see multiple expansion coming in here. And I think this is a leader going forward. H-A-L Halliburton. There's a lot of other nice stocks in this list um, that you can go and take a look at and play with. The other one was refiners. These were hot and went cold. Tesoro, we'll look at that one. Um, pocket pivot on Friday. Kahuna, huge volume on Saturday. Everything's turning green with a viable gap up. How many signals do I need? Everything green, Bible gap up, pocket pivot, kahuna, and volume. Now, the problem with refiners is earnings volatility. And you could see 13, all these things will slow down and they'll start to grow again in 14. They trade at very low multiples, I think, because of this earnings volatility. It's all over the place. If you look at historical, a lot of things control that. Um, but Tesoro certainly looks great. Valero, pull back hard. Kahuna, it's still below the 50. 
I might set a buy sort of above the 50, negative earnings per share growth after some big numbers. It's the same story, earnings up and down for this group. Holly Frontier, another one. Why I set my buys above the 50 and my stops just below the 50s, it's hard to get in. You know, I don't want to buy something that's going to keep having ice hole failures at the 50. Back. What else in here do I want to mention? Let's look at biochemistry, biochemical, biotech. One of my favorites is Gilead. Steady performer, lower left, upper right, that's 32 to about 60, nearly a double in less than a year. Um, continues to move up like this, high rank for a reason, everything is green. It is another stock that has an earnings vacuum in 2013 and expansion going into 2014, as you can see. 28 times $3 is about $84. It trades at 55. I think there's an opportunity for growth if it meets its earnings numbers. Um, Vanda is a um, early stage company, had some positive news um, this week. Bible gap up, don't know enough to tell you what to do. Bible gap up, close midline on the gap, huge volume of Kahuna. Um, if I was to buy this, I would set my stops probably at the bottom of the pivot, maybe with a little wiggle room of the, of the, of the gap up, rather. Vertex had good news a few weeks ago in cystic fibrosis. It sold off of some profit taking since. I bet this thing runs again, but I don't know when it runs again, neither do you. It's hard for me to be in a stock when I don't know when it's going to happen, and it's going to probably go sideways for a while until it gets some good news. Um, it's down this list. Anything else that I want to talk about? No, but let's talk about what's not here is Celgene. So on Tuesday or Wednesday, ESCO Abstracts came out, and on Thursday, these stocks sold off hard. And they sold off because I guess Wall Street was looking for various um, snippets. ASCO is the national, is the American Society of Clinical Oncology, it's the largest meeting for cancer companies. I'm a cancer doc, so I've been going to it for three decades. Um, I actually have a presentation there. If you have a presentation there, then there's a book that includes an abstract of your presentation. My abstract was written six months before I knew all my data, so it's just a teaser. So all these companies had their abstracts posted, and I guess people made a lot out of what they didn't see. In the case of Celgene, they're looking for a study, MM20, which might help to drive frontline approval in the EU. They didn't see anything about it there and it sold off, I think it was a premature and the wrong thing to do. And I'm still long, although I do have stops and I have sold some calls against my position. And Amgen had had some earnings difficulties, and you can see that Amgen is selling back down towards its 50, and maybe it's getting to a more interesting buy point. Anything else here before I go back to something else? Pharmaceuticals, we'll talk about these. Um, all right, let's look at these. I think the first five, four or five. I don't know anything about this company. They had some a drug news on Friday. Kajirian had a five gap up, closed near the high. Sort of had a doji on Friday, um, also on high volume, huge volume on Thursday with the Kahuna. I don't like to buy stocks that I don't know a lot about that have no revenue or earnings. It's a story stock like a good story. J&J &J doesn't have much earnings growth, but what a beautiful run since January, lower left to upper right. And um, you notice that green candle low occurred at the low of the stock. Eureka said the market was turning around, and the Kahuna, more evidence, two days in a row of momentum, giving you a signal to buy the stock on this day um, when the DMI crossed over. These things work, and that's why I look at them. Not much in the way of earnings per share to drive this. does pay a dividend. It's a nice defensive play, and that's J&J, &J, and I think most people have had this in their portfolio. AbV is a spinoff of Abbott. Probably too early to talk about, but they've got some great assets, and they've traded up from 32 at the split to 47 in a matter of about five months or less. Uh, Milan, I don't want to look at. Activist is the old Watson. This stock is in play with several people putting in bids, Valiant and Milan included. Then they put in a bid for Warner Chilcott, which drove that thing up. Uh, I own Warner Chilcott. I wish I owned Activist. I think it's too late. Um, they, if they buy Warner Chilcott, the other people will pull their bids. Um, and they pretty much have said no to the other bids anyways. 
Salient is another holding of mine that is a lower left, upper right play, a little pullback, gapped up Friday. I think the stock resumes its uptrend. It went sideways after it put in its bid for activists. See, if Warner Chilcott is in here, so I'll show you what I'm talking about, what happened with Warner Chilcott. Um, this is a stock that I actually bought, I mentioned earlier. It was down around 10. It had great earnings per share growth. Um, but it's got a bunch of drug experts, I mean, great earnings rather, not earnings per share growth. And what happened was, this is the day that I got happy when um, Valiant, I mean, activists put in a bid to buy Warner Chilcott. Um, I don't know if it will happen. I've now put some stops in. Um, I think it's worth not much more than 22 to $25 in a takeout. I've made some profits in it, so I'll have to figure out what I'm gonna do from a money management perspective. And I've got a few more minutes. I've hit the top groups there. So what else might I do? Let's take a look at my watch list, people. And I'll get to that in a second. Go into the warehouse. Go into scorecard. Let me go into my buy list for today and point out something. Another way of seeing the strength of the market is to look for wolf packs. And wolf packs would be several, several entities, similar entities, um, or, or stocks with the same industry. Auto parts and equipment, we looked at that. Home building, we looked, mentioned those. Integrated oil and gas. Equipment and services, exploration and production, refiners, pharmaceuticals, specialty chemicals, thrift and mortgage finance tied to the housing interest. These are the places that I saw opportunities to make money when I looked at charts. So let me see if there's anything here that I'd like to review with you. I will start, start with Hertz Global. Um, if you don't own this one or Avis, shame on you. Maybe you should own both. From November till now, major bull run, never pulls back, everything is green. I think it's running again. Why do I think it's running again? Because they, Hertz and Avis own most of the, of the used car companies now. You have less competition. Their prices are going up. I can tell you that being a frequent traveler. It's multiple 17, growing twice that. Uh, 17 times 250, gosh. Um, it's 25 and then another 17, 18. It's a $40 stock. It's trading at a little bit over 25. I think this one has a lot of room to go. Lionsgate Financial. Let me show you how I use seasonals. So I've had a nice run here. I didn't get into it until probably back here, and I made a few points. It's had great earnings per share growth. This sector of of uh, broadcasters and entertainment companies has done quite well. So what I do with seasonals is I might open up Magenta here and hopefully I'll open it up. Okay. All right, and I looked and what I want to do, let me see, Lionsgate Financial. L, I looked at this earlier today, so I know what I'm going to see. And what I like for my seasonal analysis, oh, uh, maybe I'm not going to like what I'm going to see. It's taken forever. I hate when that. Maybe it's Maybe it doesn't, maybe I got to update, all right. Well, I'll come back to it and see if it, I've got a lot of things open and I'm not gonna blame this one on Magenta. It's a new program, so it's gonna be buggy a little bit, but um, I think my problem is I got too many things open. Let me just give it one more chance to work. That's what got me into trouble last time. Control, Alt, Delete, Task Manager. Let's kill it and the task. Let me just try it one more time. Now, I'm going to show you a single stock, hopefully, but when the program is working right, 
and there's no reason why it's not going to work right for me. Not only will it show me a single stock, it allows me to scan the market looking for stocks that are doing well. So LGF, Lionsgate, okay. Okay, so what do, I, what do I like about Lionsgate? You can see how Lionsgate has been in a nice uptrend. And what, if I want to look out over the next, say, 25 days, what do I see? I see a big up move in Lionsgate coming. If I go into my data, I see that between May 17th and June 20th, Lionsgate was up eight years and down two. It averaged 8% gain in the up years and a loss of 0.6% in the down years. I like 8 to 2. Um, if I look at performance, five-day performance average, okay, let me look at the next 10 days, 33%. Um, yeah, I'm going to have ignore that. I don't think that's reading it the right way. Um, Bottom line is Lionsgate is at a time of the year it likes to go up, and that's what I want to see in seasonals. I don't want to buy something when it's about to drop and I know about it. So Lionsgate was one I felt interesting, both from the perspective of the lower left, upper right, the pocket pivots, the pattern, the earnings per share growth, et cetera. Santoris is another leading pharmaceutical company, lower left, upper right. Everything is green. We talk about it every week. It's got earnings per share growth. We looked at some of the refiners. Let's look at a couple of housers. This is Ryland. Talked about this last week. Great earnings per share growth. Continues to move up. A little bit extended. Here is D.R. Horton. This is the guy that every time earnings come out, it pops. Um, all green. Pocket pivot on Friday. It, too, has earnings per share growth. And trades getting closer to its multiple, teeny weeny dividend, maybe getting closer to the end of its run. There's Valiant. Eagle is a cement company. We talk about intermittently. It looks like it wants to run again. Multiple pocket pivots here turning green. Next are broadcasting with those entertainment broadcasters I mentioned, with Lionsgate. Pulling back a little bit, all green. Take a look at earnings per share growth on NXST and, and ask, tell me why you don't want to own one of these. I'll keep the 37. If it does three bucks, it's a how much is that stock worth? 60, 80, 50? It's worth more than 30 bucks a share. So what I like are stocks that have earnings per share growth. A couple of special cases. Louisiana Pacific is a rent is a um, lumber stock. It sold off hard. Um, so it's tied to housing. Um, no dividend. Pullback, broke above the 50-day moving average. This would be one I'd call a pullback waiting for a signal, and I'll be looking for a pocket pivots or a kahunas or something that tells me it's time to buy, and um, it's one that I'm interested in. There are a number of companies, Walter Investments, Owen Financial, um, New Star Mor or Nation Star Mortgage, um, all of which are the same. These are companies that have bought um, Poorly, perform mar mar poorly performing, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Poorly performing mortgages have bundled them and serviced them. They've got great earnings per share momentum. This is Walters, $6 earnings. Keeps your 11, that's $66. It trades at 40. OCN, look at the earnings per share growth coming in here. Even 20 times $5 is 100, it trades at 45. And NSM, the other one, Nation Star, great earnings per share growth, trades at a huge discount. I think all these have an upside. Liked a lot of those. And I guess if you like to bottom fish, and sometimes I do, this is super microcomputer. And what struck me on this one was a couple of different things. SMCI. Big earnings, growth, small multiple. I know where to set my buy, somewhere up here. It's got to get above that 50. Everything has turned green. Great group strength here. 
Three kahunas in the last couple of weeks, so it's on the right side of the 405 for those that have been to the meeting, in my mind, a break up above that 200, I'm in this stock, setting my stop probably below the 50, I think this guy could run a little bit. I mean, obviously, it's a bottom fish, and that's not what we learn in HTSI land, but you can make money on bottom fishes too. On that note, let me just go and look at um, my spreadsheet, and then I'm going to say good night. I'll, I'll put my spreadsheet on. I'll make it so it fills the screen. I'll give you a chance to pause it if you want to write down the stocks that I thought were interesting. Go look yourself. And um, let's see. That's not going to work. So these are stocks that I like. Bible Tetra Technologies was an energy stock, services stock with the Bible Gap up. We looked at Hertz, Santoris, and Lionsgate, and Ryland, and Eagle, and NSM. These are stocks that are leaders. I say extended or gone. In this market, leaders are working. Then I have breakouts with good earnings. The automobile manufacturers, Axel, Vistian are there. Some of the oil services, HOS, and Halliburton. There's that OCN. Noble Energy, you might look at S&M as another energy play. The next I call pullbacks ready to run. These are stocks that have pulled back to a major moving average, and I'm looking for a reason, a kahuna, a DI crossover, a pocket pivot, tell me that they're waking up because I don't want something that's going to be sitting there sideways for a while. Uh, these, the, these, frankly, already have those signals. The ones waiting for signals, I'm waiting to see those signals. So these are all things that I thought were um, interesting. I think KEY was another bottom fish. Let me see. I can't remember what. I thought about KEY, but I remember I thought something about it. That can't be the right, let me see, it's not KEY, is it? All right, there's something out. I've got a, I must have a symbol error, because I don't think it's KEY. Now, I'm going to skip it right now because of the element of time. KEYW Holding Company, $14.57 stock. I think this was one of those bottom fishes I saw. No, it was a pullback waiting to run. And then lastly, my bottom fishing stocks. We looked at SMCI. Last week, I think I mentioned the educational companies. They had a big move this week. ESI is one of them. On that note, I wish you all a safe and happy week trading. Um, hope you found this to be of use. I always enjoy thank yous and people letting me know they like them. And um, as I said, I may have a package of indicators on the market shortly. So I'll stop the recording and say good night.